Right, so summer's here, we can't do anything. What is everybody in the UK pretty much done? Gotta buy himself a blow up kayak. Yes, I brought one and my wife brought herself a paddle board. Great fun, it's brilliant. Can't fault people for buying it. I did it myself and I've been having a crack in time on. But my wife's normally on her board. She might have one of the kids sitting with her every now and again. But on the majority of the time, the kids are in the kayak with me. My two kids are too small to row. So I'm in a two man kayak with two kids in the front, paddling my ass off in the back, which is fine. It's good fun, it's exercise, we get to do stuff in a local area. I do enjoy it very much, but you gotta put a bit of tech on it. So what I decided to do was put myself a little bit of tech on this outdoor activity. So I thought, let's stick a motor on it. Search the web and all different places for different motors and stuff, and you can buy them, and you can buy things that just clip on, but they're about a grand, maybe more. There is cheaper options on AliExpress where you can buy pre-made stuff, but yet again, you're looking at silly money. I'm tight, I ain't gonna spend that sort of money. So, first route, I've got three 3D printers, see if I can print one. So I actually managed to find this STL file. So this is the final model. These are both 3D printed, and also the propeller is 3D printed. Uh, I had a little bit of issue with the propeller as they were spinning at such a colossal speed it was folding. I actually bought was I bought some of this. It's two part epoxy, mix it together and I actually painted the propellers with the epoxy. Left them to dry for 24 hours, now they're hard as nails. And that was a good idea because all the other ones I did kept failing. They're printed out of PETG, really strong, really hard and I've had no issues with them whatsoever. As for the drive, I've got cheap, crappy 13T motors off Amazon. Yes, people are going to say, well, they're going to rust, they're going to do this. They are. They are going to rust and they are going to get screwed up. But the difference is, they were 10 quid. If I have to replace these once a year, I'm alright with that. That's 20 quid. I haven't got to spend 250 quid on waterproof motors just to do it. I'll probably get bored with it in a year or two. So, 20 quid. Pretty much a half decent ride. If I run them on full power flat out, yes, it will drain them pretty quick, but I'm using this pretty much as more of an assist, not a boat. I'm not going to go boating on it, it's just to help me because the kids are not paddled. I got these off eBay and I think they're about 25 quid. Nice, cheap, nice and simple. Right, so you will see on there, right here is two speed controllers. I got these off Amazon and they were 20 quid. They were 50 amp. They're 50 amp and I know stuff was going to get hot so I thought about cooling the system down. So that is where I bought this little aluminium cooling block and I thought if I pump the water through the broads that I am boating in through the system it will keep that cold because I ran it without it first and I was getting condensation in the box and it was getting pretty hot. So I thought I'd knock out on the head and I'd make it water cooled. So to power this said water cooled is a small old ass lipo I found in the garage. It's fine, it works fine, it's just running a tiny little pump that keeps everything cool, so I'm okay with that. So the batteries and everything, they all go obviously to the speed controllers and then the speed controllers get fed out to the control system. I then wanted to think about what can I do to not have a radio, I just wanted to be able to turn it on and off easy. So as you can see, battery, speed controllers connected to an aluminium block, pipes going out that way, all wires going out the top. 
So on the top, we have a little 12 volt, 60 watt pond pump. You can pretty much get these off Amazon, eBay, anywhere, and they're cheap as chips, they're about 10 quid. It'll do four liters a minute, so it's not gonna rush it around something stupid, and it does the job. So that, one end is going directly into the aluminium block, and then the other end goes out into the broads, and then the other end also goes down there to suck water in. So it's a cycle from, from the broads, through the block, through the pump, and then back out to the broads. And to be honest, this actually worked a lot better than I thought it would, so I'm quite happy with that. As for control, I went for this. It is a very bog standard simple servo tester or motor tester, whatever you want to search for on eBay. I think this costs about three quid. To try and keep everything watertight, I've put everything in waterproof switches. All the switches are waterproof. These have got waterproof bungs on. I've even got waterproof bungs on the pipe for the switch. Whatever is outside of the box, I've put in a plastic pipe and I have sealed each end. These, to be honest, has been got wet a couple of times, but it's been fine if you dry it out. Everything in here is sealed, all the switches are waterproof, obviously the pump's waterproof anyway. This is not exactly massively waterproof, but I have silicon the end of the pipes and I have not had any leaks yet. So two switches, one for the pump and one for the motor power. So one flick on, that turns on. There's your motor's primed. And then what you have to do with the pump is you get it in the water, start it up, it's a little bit noisy, and then water will cycle through and you get everything ready. Make sure that's kind of running first, so make sure everything's cool before you fire up. So once you've got everything nailed down and everything bolted, you stick your lunchbox in the back of the kayak, plenty long enough cable on this for you to sit in front of it, so everything's behind you, you haven't got to stress out about anything, all you've got is this on your lap. So when the tide starts getting a little bit too heavy, you get your switch and you wind it up a little bit. Or you wind it up a lot. And it goes like the clappers. Obviously, when you're in the boat, it's not going to be stupid fast because it's two farty little motors on a battery and you've got a lot of weight in the boat. But if I sit in the boat and have this all running, I can still overtake the people rowing. Right, please excuse the change of video as my camera just decided to die. This is what I would determine as a poor man's kayak motor because it is made from cheap parts. It still works. They get, yeah, the motors are going to break, I know, before the comments come in. Yes, the motors will bugger up, but they're cheap and I don't care. Um, lunchbox in the back. Little blue controller on your lap when you need it. Wind it up a bit. Away you go. Jobs are good and pretty cheap. Keeps yourself water cooled. Job done. Haven't had any problems with that. I've taken it out a few times. It does work. Pushes me along quite nicely. I'm pretty happy with it. I'll leave, I'll leave links down in the descriptions of all the bits and bobs I've used. Obviously, I won't include the plastic pipe and all the stuff because that's just stuff you can get from your general DIY shops or anywhere else really. Everything else is pretty much from eBay or Amazon and it's all dirt cheap. I don't expect it to last forever, but how long our summers are, it'll probably last quite a while because I'll be in garage most of the year. Got a few more projects in the pipe work that I do want to kind of do. Um, I've just bought a paddle board as well, so I was thinking about making a single solitary fin motor for that, so keep tuned for that, I'll probably start that pretty soon. And also, um, I want to make a jet board, I want to get itself a half decent sized body board, and I don't want to go on the propeller side, I want to go on the jet turbine side. So I'm now in talks with someone about getting some 3D printed files, so I can print my own jet turbines at home. And that thing will, should go like crap off a shovel, so stay tuned for that one as well. As always, give a like, give a subscribe, because it's nice to actually know people watch these videos. And uh, I'll see you next time. Ah.